Hello everyone, welcome. I'll wait for somebody to come in. Let me see if I can find myself on the internet. <laughs> oh man. That is not what I want. It's just gonna take me a little while. Turn that off. There it is. Found myself. <laughs> so um, today is going to be about uh, planting some herbs. I started the herb garden challenge with <clears throat> everyone about a month ago on the first of last month or yeah of last month and well let me show you some of the plants have thrived some of them are already outside like the basil I've already separated the basil out and put it in separate pots and some of them are outside doing their work because they're going to be around my sweet potatoes and my pepper and, and everything the, the the garden that I planted yesterday you'll I didn't do it on film just thought about that well you'll see it when I do an update of what's going on in the garden yesterday I was doing a lot of things I was out there for hours but I was so filthy at the end of the day eh, that's how gardeners are right <laughs> so I have a couple like the sage, the oregano. Look at the chamomile. Look at that. The flower's already here. The chamomile and the dill. They all need to be up potted. I've already up potted the, um, the basil. And this is the sorrel. Now, Everything did not do as well as I expected it to. Let me put these to the side because these have, these are the ones, these four are the ones that we're going to up pot. The part, excuse me, the dill, the chamomile, the sage, and the oregano. All four of these need to be up potted because they're too, too crowded and I don't want them to um, strangle each other out. So there are some that didn't do as well as I expected. So I'm going to plant some more seeds. And so one of them didn't come up at all. And I'll tell you about that in a minute. So here's my chives. Scanty. They're still coming up though. But I'm gonna plant some more because that's not enough chives for me. How you doing Southern, Southern Girls City Gardening? How you doing? Welcome, welcome. So this is my chives and they're scanty. Look at that. I have like five, six little chives coming up. That's not enough for me. So I'm gonna plant some more chives. My thyme is doing okay, and I'm gonna upplant this too. I'm gonna put this in its own pot. My thyme is doing okay, so I guess I'll upplant this too. It doesn't need to really be a potted, but I'm gonna give it more room. Here's my cilantro. I don't know. I don't know, Southern City Girl Gardening, what do you think? That's my cilantro, I, 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 I'm gonna plant some more. <laughs> That's not enough cilantro for me. I know that the, these get a, a little bushy, but I only have like, I don't know, seven, eight of them. And they're, they're you know, they look a little, a little, little like they're struggling. So I'm gonna plant some more of that. My ashwagandha, I am not up planting. It is still coming up. Ashwagandha is slow, slow, slow. If you look in there, right there, there's a seed that's just coming up. He said it looks good. Hmm. I want more chives and I want more cilantro. And I didn't get any of one thing I, that I'm getting ready to talk about. So the ashwagandha is doing good. Ashwagandha is doing good. So we're going to put that to the side. And then we're not going to upplant the cilantro. We're just going to plant some more. And we're not going to upplant the chives. We're just going to plant some more. And the basil has already been upplanted in its own pots. I might, let me see how many pots I got. Two, four, six, seven, two, four, five. Mmm, pushing it, Jamaica. 
We'll see. We'll see how much soil we have or how much soil I have. What type of basil did you plant? I wish I had brought it over here. It's over on the other side. So later on in the video, um, I'll run over there and get it. I should have brought all my packets over here, but it's the Dollar Tree seeds that I use. So I don't know what kind of basil it is. Don't know, but it's on the packet. It's on the other side. So these are the three that I have right now. I'm gonna run and get that packet right now when it's just you and I'll tell you what it is. Let's just one second, let me get the thing. And I'm back, I'm back. It's Jenna, Jenna Vies. Dollar Tree, Dollar Tree seeds. All of, almost all of them with the exception of the sorrel and the ashwagandha. Yep, oh, and the camp, no, the camp meal's from Dollar Tree too. Yeah, the sorrel and the ashwagandha is the only thing that is not from the Dollar Tree. Let me put this back. I put them in alphabetical order so I can find them. So I'll put this right here. Want me to light. All right, so I guess the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to replant some of these seeds. So the one thing that's first in my thing is parsley, the Italian parsley that did not do anything for me. <laughs> I'm so irritated with this parsley. <laughs> parsley is supposed to be easy to grow. It's supposed to be. It's supposed to be easy. And I have, I have a surprise at the end because there's one particular herb that if you don't co-sow it, I drink the ashwagandha for stress and focus. Southern City Girl Gardening. I drink the ashwagandha for stress and focus. Love it. I heard, I heard that it is good. The, the ashwagandha that I have in the greenhouse is scanty or thin. So I'm going to try this time to put more um, 511. I'm gonna see if I can grow it and get it bushier, this one, this time. Give it some nutrients, more nutrients than the ones that I did last year. It took a long time for that ashwagandha to come up from seed though. Some of it, I mean, initially I only had one little ashwagandha. I was like, man, that's, those seeds are terrible. They're old. They're, they're at least two years old, but I was like, they should do better than that. And then they started coming up slowly, little by little. So if your seeds don't come up automatically, don't give up on them. So I have my pot here and I just made a mess. Let me move these out the way so y'all can see. Without knocking my pots over. So I have my pot here. And this little tag belongs here. I, I know what soil looks like, but I'm going to still leave the tags on there. And I'm going to take my parsley seeds and we're going to get some parsley. I'm going to force this thing to germinate. This one I just bought, so it doesn't expire to the end of the year. I think the other pack may have been older. And this is Italian parsley. Oh, there's four people watching. Welcome for you, those of you all watching. On I'm one of those people. I watch on TV too. Or I watch while I'm supposed to be doing something and I can't, you know, get on and say anything. But I welcome you guys. You are always welcome on this channel. Remember that. Always. I appreciate all of you. So here is the Italian parsley. There we go. Whole pack. And it's not because it's 25 cents. Just to, I want some parsley and I'm giving it the opportunity to thrive that like they used to tell us. <laughs> Give everybody an opportunity to thrive. So I got my parsley seeds in there and I'm gonna dust it with some soil so it doesn't fall over. It's really small. The seeds are really super small. Let me take the sticks out. That will stop your stuff from germinating. Also big old sticks. To us, it's a, li it's a little stick. To that little seed, it's a log. Might as well be a tree log, so. Okay, we're covering that one up. 
And we got our Italian parsley planted just like that. One down, onto the chive. I already made a mess, so I, I give up. <laughs> I got soil all over the floor. This is an everyday occurrence for me. If I'm planting in the house, I'm gonna make a mess. If I'm planting outside, I'm gonna make a mess. Unless I'm in the yard. I'm in the yard and it's already out, it's already dirty out there, so all I do is get myself looking like the looking like the backyard. <laughs> Yesterday I know my neighbor saw me. I was filthy. Filthy. I, <laughs> I was so tired when I came in. I was so tired that all I could do was, you know, put the chickens up. I mean, I didn't even, I didn't, I didn't even go through the uh, drill of, you know, turning on the light. I just let them go in there. It got dark. I closed the door, checked to make sure if there was any stragglers out there. I have had that happen. That is never good. Let my dogs out and there's still a chicken out there. It's a good thing my dogs listen to me because they, if I did not see those two chicks, they would have ate them. Well, they would have bit them up. They don't eat them. So I always check to see if there's any straggler chickens or chicks out there. And then I let the dogs out to do their thing. So we're going to do the chives right here. And it just says chive and then it says herb. It doesn't I guess a chive is a chive. Oh, God, like, look at these chives. Look at that. I appreciate you, Chives. I do, I do, I do. I love you just as much, but I want more of you. That's not enough for me. Look at that. So for those of you all looking at the challenge, you know, everything, everybody is not going to have the same results because I talked to some people when I was planting the chives. Well, that's it. There ain't nothing left. And they said their chives were prolific and beautiful and it came up every year. I was like, if I don't, if I have five chives, I mean, I'm going to think this is grass. <laughs> Cause no, we're going to mow it down. <laughs> Get these big old logs out of my hand. I have a bucket here. I have a bucket of some outside soil and I have a bag of fresh soil. I'm trying not to use the stuff from outside because I know them jokers, that joker has bugs in it. I know it does. All right. So here's our chives planted. I'm watching from work. Don't tell them. I used to do the same thing. Man. <laughs> and I and I would be at work and I'll just be listening unless something really interesting started happening on somebody's live or somebody. Yeah, usually it was somebody's live. And I would like stop for a minute and look. Then I go back to what I was doing. I wasn't supposed to be. Well, I guess you it I think that listening or taking your mind off of stuff, you know, you can listen to something and work at the same time. You can do it. Multitasking is, people say you can't multitask. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. And sometimes taking a break at work because sometimes I would just stop for like 10 minutes, watch whoever it was I was watching. And it took my mind away from the stress for at least 10 minutes. And when I got back and I looked at it, it looked different and it got easier. I came up with solutions that I didn't have before because before I took that break, I was super stressed out, super stressed out. Man, <laughs> I didn't really think about that. Sometimes I would take breaks and then I would watch lives and we had, you know, we had deadlines. Deadlines are always, you know, stressful. And I watch somebody's live and then I end up working it till 10 o'clock at night. Just sitting in front of the computer trying to finish my work. <laughs> but I still had TV on watching other people's live. I always had the TV on because that was besides going out and gardening. And I wasn't, I was, before I started my channel, I was on YouTube a long time. It's under a different name though. I was on YouTube a long time just waiting. And there was sometimes, and this is why I say, always say hello to the people who are watching. And you know, some people can't say anything because they're either at work or they're watching on their TV and you can't very well write a comment when you're on TV. And I remember that some of the YouTubers would get, who were doing lives would get super irritated because nobody was saying anything or 
They saw people on, you know, they saw the numbers on their channel, but they didn't see anybody speaking to them or interacting with them. They were like, oh, you know, is this a bunch of, um, what do they call them, trolls? And I was like, no, it's just a bunch of people on TV. Who don't, and sometimes some people don't want to talk to nobody. They just want to watch the show because you go on somebody, some people's show and you, you announce yourself and then you got to say, hi, you know, hi to everybody. And while you're saying hi, you can't listen to the information that's being put out. At least I can't. I can multitask, but I mean, I'm trying to type this email and say, you know, hello to everybody. And then I mean, and I want to say hi, I'm not going to be rude. I'm always going to say hi to whoever. Say, hello, New Orleans Gardner. How are you doing? I'm going to, I'm going to uh, say hello to everybody because I was raised to do, you know, to speak. Somebody say hello to you either in person or on, you know, on the internet. I'm not going to just ignore them saying hi to me. So I always respond. And while I'm responding, somebody like New Orleans Gardner put out some information and the information. And then I'm like, oh man, now I got to go on the TV and rewind everything. <laughs> I get irritated like that. But I'm always polite. Even when somebody's not polite to me, I try and I get mad at myself sometimes. I said, you should have said this and you should have said that. But sometimes, you know, you gotta give people a break, and if they if they turn out to be you know just a mean person, just stay away from them. You ain't gotta you ain't gotta do tit for tat, even though sometimes you might want to. Cause I know in my mind, I sometimes in my mind I'm like, oh God, Lord, please, you know the tongue is wicked, and they say sticks and stones can break your bones, but names will never hurt me. That's not true. Words hurt. Words can damage people just as much as the fist. Sometimes, even worse. All right, retired the retired gardener. True, my YouTube, uh, my YouTube is retirement gardener, and I'm I'm looking for guests. Okay, does everybody got that? Retired the retired gardener. Go ahead and look on that ch channel. Check her out. Or it is yeah, it is her. And I've been on that channel. I'm a subscriber. I don't say anything. <laughs> I watch a lot of people on TV and I'm one of those people who's in the bushes most of the time, most of the time. And, you know, I, one lady, she said, Jamerica, <laughs> you was on there watching, why you people? I was like, I was watching on TV. I was enjoying myself. Ain't you supposed to enjoy myself on your show? Well, I ain't enjoying yourself, myself on your show. I ain't watching. <laughs> I didn't tell her that. But, you know, I'm still supporting you. And I appreciate people supporting me. Wherever you are. I don't judge. I don't, I, 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 don't, I don't judge nobody. I don't judge nobody. Because I'm not perfect. So here is our cilantro. We have done all the seeds. We planted the chives. While I was running my mouth. We planted the chives. The parsley. and the cilantro. They're all from Dollar Tree. That's 75 cents right there. 75 cents and some, some soil. Some of it is gonna be recycled in a minute. So those three are replanted. Not that I had to because, I mean, the only one that I had to replant was parsley because that didn't come up. But the chives, you know, look at that. Mm -mm. No. Let's see. The retired, retired gardener. Hello, T-Nog. T-Nog, by the way, is the New Orleans gardener. Trying to find guests for my podcast. Let me know if you have any available time. Oh, that'd be cool. And then the New Orleans gardener said, Hello, retired gardener. The retired gardener. I'm a wife, a grandma, an aunt, and a sister. All right. The retired gardener says, Nice. And the retired gardener said, Hey, T-Nog. And Titina is the New Orleans gardener, for those who don't know. So we have um, the ones that are overcrowded. The first one I'm going to look at is chamomile. And they say you can bunch plant chamomile, but I don't know. This thing looks like it's struggling. Let's look at it down. Let's get it out of here. Look at that. You don't want that. There's too many plants in here. It's a good thing I didn't wait. I, I know that we're not supposed to do an update until, what, two days from now? 
I should have I had I should have already a planted this. That's why it's look at that. Sometimes when plants are turning yellow, it's not because of lack of water. It's because there's too many plants in the pot. Now, I don't know how I'm gonna get this thing apart, but I'm splitting it in two. I am separating it. I don't like doing it like this, but there's way too many of them in here. I think I'm gonna separate it in three. Let's see here. I'm irritated with myself because I waited way too long. Waited a long time. And now they're all intertwined. Okay. Trying to be careful, as careful as I can get. Wow. Still a lot in this one. I'm gonna leave these be. Okay, so I separated it into three. Let's get some soil. I need to get a TV tray or go to um the big C big box store. There's the ones you have to pay to get into. And um go ahead and get a, a a table and put it on here. So when I'm doing something like this, I don't have to turn to my side and do all kind of gymnastics in order to get some soil. Ah uh, yeah. So yes, I'm going to have to repost again in two days, but at least I have to do things when I feel like it. I don't know about you all, but some days, some days are better than others. Some days I don't, I don't feel like doing this stuff and I don't, I'll go out there and water my plants and that'll be it. And some days I go out there like yesterday and plant a couple of rows. Just depends. I don't know if y'all know, sometimes I videotape three three or four videos in one day make sure because <laughs> i know how i am i don't know about y'all but I, I i'll videotape a couple of them in a day I, i'll put videotape on one side of the yard and have a whole bunch of stuff usually it's an hour worth of content and then i'll go and i'll be dirty sometimes y'all look at me like jamerica ain't even wash her clothes before she came on tv <laughs> that's because i've been out in the yard all day all day long planting stuff my flowers is here how you doing welcome g mama grows is here g mama grows hard in the garden how you doing welcome trying to get this chamomile in here yeah i'm doing the best i can to get my keep my plants alive I just try. You're not gonna always succeed, but something, something gotta give. You keep trying. That's why I went ahead and replanted that parsley, cause I don't give up on nothing. Had I been, a, had I been a quitter, I probably wouldn't be on YouTube no more. <laughs> my mama told my mama always told me, don't nobody let nobody or nothing stop you from doing what you want to do. You just keep on trying, and that's what I do. You know, she said another thing she says is don't let nobody tell you who you are who you are. Don't let nobody tell you who you are. And never give up. If you want to do something, just do it. Keep on doing it. You only compete competing with the, the, the lady in the mirror. Complete I'm competing with myself. <laughs> Every day. Trying to be, you know, a better person. Trying to be better. Let's see, did I miss anybody? G Mama grows hard in the garden. Said hello to Miss Linda, which is also the New Orleans gardener. <laughs> Ma'am, you have a lot of names. <laughs> you earned a lot of names because you've been out there. You've been on to YouTube schooling people on gardening. I'm like, what? I didn't know that. Have you? I, one time I bought some seeds. I think it was a watermelon, and she was like, "Have you all ever heard of this watermelon?" <laughs> I was like, "No, I just spent four dollars on those seeds." <laughs> I think I'm. I think I got them planted already. I think I got all my melons planted. I, I think. I was like, "No, they made it sound so delicious on the set site." <laughs> then I find out it don't have no taste. 
Let's see. Um, the retired gardener. I work hard on my life. I I will not be treated as a child. So I feel. So I feel you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or you know, you just gotta. Somebody does slight you. Or you give. I get. Sometimes I I give them one or two tries because I'm like that. That that person could possibly be this rude. It's just having a bad day. I'll make an excuse once or twice, but after that, no more excuses. I don't say nothing. I just keep my distance because I don't like feeling bad. I don't like people who make me feel bad. Life's hard enough. <laughs> I don't need no extra help. <laughs> Let me see what who else is there. Let's see. Southern, uh, Southern Girl City Gardener. Okay. Michael Jackson, the man in the mirror. Yes. But I'm competing with the girl in the mirror. That's the only thing. That's the only person you should be competing with. Life. Is, I mean, there's competitions out there. Of course, this is a competition. But I'm gonna tell you the truth. I don't care if I win or not. <laughs> I just do it because I like doing it, and I like participating. So that's my prize. I'll be doing. And I said this before on my on my channel. I will be gardening. Whether I was I was gardening before. Um. Before I ever showed up on YouTube, I just watched other people. I was like, oh, that's interesting. And then I initially, I was like, do you really want to put yourself out there and come out of the shadows? And then I was watching, and, I, and, and, and I, I, I've been watching this guy for years, so I'm going to say his name. Larry Farmer 73, he was out there telling everybody, y'all need to start a channel. And I was like coming up on a time where I was going to have enough. I knew that I was coming up on, on retirement. And I was like... I'm retired too. <laughs> I was coming up re on retirement and I was like, initially I was like, well, you know, I like, I enjoy my privacy. Can you tell most of my videos are in my backyard? I ain't no one of those people out there on, on a, you know, I might have one where I was out and about. I don't think so though. I just, I, I enjoyed my privacy and I was like, man, do you really want to put yourself out there and you know, you know, there's always that fear. But then I thought to myself, well, at least try. And you want to do it. And I told um, someone before I started the channel, I was like, I think I'm going to start a YouTube channel. And they were like, really? And then when I did it, they were like, you really did that? <laughs> I was like, yes. Yeah, I did it. So yeah, I'm here. I've been here for about a year now, just over a year. I've been on YouTube watching in the shadow for over that time. Let me go back here. Oh, wow. Let's see, G Mama grows hard in the garden. That's that part. And the retired gardener said exactly. And then the retired gardener said, I retired, I retired after 37 years of working hard. So my gardening channel is only for fun. Yep. Yep. Nobody rides for free. <laughs> Everybody had to work. <laughs> I ain't gonna say how old I am, but mm, the day I turned 16, I had a job. That was only because I wanted to be get, get from underneath my mama and my grandmama. I told them, well, you can't afford to buy. This is, this, this is me being a politician. I started my po politician phase early in life because they were so strict. My family was super strict with me. I was the only girl and the rest were all boys. And man, I couldn't leave the porch. <laughs> I had to sit on the porch. I could, they wouldn't, she wouldn't even let me, my grandma, I could see her at the screen door looking at me. Tell me, don't you just sit there. I, I was a crochet queen. That's what I was until I turned 16. I had a friend who, um, I grew up in New York City. I had a friend who worked at McDonald's. We called him Ab. And Ab was like, yeah, yeah, Jamerica, I get you a job. Let me go talk to Louie. <laughs> Louie was the manager. Louie was the manager at McDonald's. I wasn't 16 yet. That was two or three weeks before I was 16. The day I was 16, I started working. Let me see here. Uh, so after 37 years of hard work, you deserve to do whatever you want to do. The retired gardener. G-Mama grows hard in the garden. <laughs> See, 
see my eyes. The retired garden, same here, but I'm trying. Yep, the retired garden. I didn't use my YouTube channel until last year. Yeah, that's what I did. I didn't, I, I, um, I was watching. I commented maybe once or twice, and that was for years. I've been watching YouTube for a long time. I'd watch, never comment, never say a word. Then I just came out of the woodworks and I know these YouTubers are like, who is this Jamerica? She keep commenting on my videos. Some people are not pleased. First day of unpleased because you don't, you, you're just sitting in the backwoods, you know, listening like a stalker. <laughs> and then they get mad when you start voicing your opinion. No, oh, well, I am who I am. <laughs> I never go, but however, uh, it, I believe, my mom always told me, if you ain't got nothing nice to say, don't say nothing at all. I try to stick to that. You can't take back some words. Let's see. <sighs> the retired gardener. Same here. I will be 60 next year. Wow. I have never been without a job. Even in high school and college, I worked here. I went straight into the army out of high school. Straight in. And... I remember, I'm supposed to be planting these plants. I remember the drill sergeant coming up to me. I was 17. Little girl, you won't go home to your mama? And I thought to myself, dude, my mother is far meaner than you are. <laughs> I have more freedom in basic training than I did at home. No, I don't go back there. <laughs> Let's see. Correction. The retired garden. Correction, I'll be 60 next month. Well, congratulations. And why don't you do a live for your 60th so we can have a party online. All of us, well, you probably won't be with your family. But if you don't, enjoy it with your YouTube family. Or maybe give us 30 minutes of your 60th birthday. We'll enjoy seeing you there. G Mama grows hard in the garden. Good grief. Some folks just can't be satisfied. <laughs> It takes courage to join. No, it don't. Not when you're trying to run away from your strict family. No, no, it don't. I did. I would. <laughs> My daddy was in the army, but he got, dra he got drafted. <laughs> My uncle was in the army, but he got drafted. And I had a bunch. And my uncle was in the Air Force. He got drafted in the army. He switched to Air Force. So I come from a military background. No, I was just trying to get away from them. <laughs> and New York City. I didn't want to be there no more. Let's see. G Mama grows hard in the garden. I went straight into the army after graduation too. Mm -hmm. That's the best way to go because you still a little kid. Your bones don't hurt. That's when I. That's when I. I always said to myself, I'm not. I'm gonna stay in, and uh, I don't want to be that little old lady that they're gonna have to help off the off the five ton or the deuce and a half. I don't want to be that one. And then it happened. Where was I in Iraq? I was in Iraq. And I had twisted my ankle and I couldn't carry my things. I had that big old flat vest on. I felt like I was going to have a heart attack. I said, you know what? It's time for me to go. Let's see. Uh, what is, the retired gardener says, I'm not big in front of the camera, but I'm trying. Try. Try. Just be yourself. Be yourself. And you'll be just fine. Don't try to be, you know. I... Some people might not like my personality, but that's who I am. So it's all right. That's, I can't change. I mean, I can change things for the good, but I'm not going to change because somebody else doesn't like who I am. And I've said this before. My mama always said it because I used to be so upset. And I say, mommy, blah, 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 doesn't like me. <laughs> and she said, Jamaica, people didn't like Jesus Christ. <laughs> I was like, and look what they did to him. Oh, well, after I thought about that, I was like, well, that meant that, that, that puts things into a whole new perspective. I just be myself. I just, just, you know, try to be as pleasant as possible to people. And I do that across the board. If you meet me out in the street, I may not say anything, but I certainly will not be rude unless you really, you really have to do something really bad, really, really bad. And I don't ever, I don't ever remember just getting mean with somebody unless you know i had to so anyway it it, it uh it goes across i hope if it, it, it follows me i try 
Let's see. The retired gardener is laughing. Baby, I joined the Navy to get away from home. You understand my... <laughs> you understood my plight. <laughs> and my poor grandma, she loved me so much because I would be in church with her. We would, I mean, that was my outing. We go to church. No, we was at home. And my grandma always had me sitting right beside her. Always, always, right there in church. And um, that that's just the way it was. It was just, it was too, too much, too strict. Let's see. Retired gardener. Wow. So, baby joined the Navy. The Navy was, I didn't want to go to the Navy because I couldn't swim at that time. And I didn't want, I, I heard things from my dad and from my uncles about the Navy, how it was so close, the quarters were so close. And then they said there weren't a lot of women back then. There wasn't a lot of women. I'm, I wasn't a whack. That was the Women's Army Corps. I wasn't a whack. But I came in about, I say seven years after that. I, 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 was, I joined in the 80s. And the Navy was not taking women when I joined was not taking women. So I was, I didn't care. I don't want to go to Navy anyway. I wanted to go to army. And my uncle who was in air force was so upset. He was like, you should have joined the air force. My dad and them was like, air force doesn't get promoted. And they were right. Air force people do not get promoted as quickly. That means they made less money. Let's see. Uh, retired gardener, retired gardener. Exactly. Retired gardener. Exactly. G mom goes hard in the garden. Facts. <laughs> baby yes i was also i was also in the city i grew up what is it i grew up and had to get away new york city or any city is no place for a little girl in my opinion it's not safe let's see g mama grows hard and gone says facts baby said yes I also grew up in the city. Bieber said it's probably 20% women. I was an aircraft mechanic. I was a transportation. I was in transportation the entire time. I wasn't driving tr trucks. I was a coordinator. So they call it a traffic manager on the outside. So then I got another job. Once I got out of the military, I got another job. It almost. The thing is, when I retired from the military, I didn't know what to do. And the only women that were in the neighborhood, in this neighborhood, were housewives. We weren't the same age and we didn't have the same thing in common. So it was like, I found myself becoming more and more nocturnal, like waking up when everybody got home from work. And I said to myself, <clears throat> this is not normal. You need to get another job. So that's what I did. When I got another job. Until I got tired of it. <laughs> I was like, you know what? I'm out of here. <laughs> And when you tell people that you're going to retire, they look at you like you're crazy. You couldn't possibly retire. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, did. I retired early from the city of Austin. I work for Austin. So I was like, it's time for me to go. I'm tired. of. T I, after we got locked in, initially when we got locked in, separated, and um, it split up like my family. Oh, that was the worst part. They had locked down New York City. They wouldn't let anybody from Texas in. That's where I am. All my family, almost all, almost all my family, with the exception of a few cousins who are out here with me in Texas, we could not go and see them. Their governor did not want us. So then they got, then, you know, because they were having so many problems. And my mom is there, my, my aunts, my, everybody is there. And I couldn't go. They said if you go if you go to the city, you have to stay in your house. You can't you gotta quarantine for two weeks. So man. I learned a lot of things like Instacart, because I had to worry about I was worried about my mom. My mom is elderly. And I didn't want her out there in the store. So I started learning how to do things online in order to get food to her. That was the main thing. Cause it was cold there and she couldn't go out. She, I didn't want her out there. So man, thinking about it back at that time. So after all of that happened, they wanted us to come back to work. Time to come back. <laughs> America was like, what? 
come back. Initially, I didn't want to stay at home, but once I got used to it after a couple of years of, you know, staying in the house, I got quite comfortable. My garden was thriving. I was getting to watch, you know, New Orleans. Well, New Orleans didn't come until nighttime, but like lead form of 73, he coming during the day. Man, I didn't want to come back there to see them. So I didn't. I put in my papers. <laughs> There is our sage. I, I split the sage in half. Let's see. Bebe said Albuquerque. I don't understand. Oh, that's where you're from. Okay. Okay, I'm from New York. New York City. Initially. I lived there when I was a kid. I left when I was 17, so I don't know if that really counts. Some My cousins have even said to me, Jamarica, you don't sound like a New Yorker anymore. And I was like, shoot, that's cool. That's cool. I've been away so long. I've been away longer, um, <clears throat> longer than I was raised. I mean, I was born and raised there, but I've been away so long that I'm not. I don't know if I'm truly considered a New Yorker. I don't know. They might have, they might have um, ousted me. What do they call it? excommunicated? <laughs> I don't care. Let's see. G Mama grows hard in the garden. Air Force makes less than the Army because they don't get promoted. They don't get promoted. They, they, you know, my uncle who was Air Force, he said, you know, the army, they're going to break you down and, um, and you, you know, they're going to make you sick and all this stuff. My dad was in the army and my dad outranked him. And I was like, <clears throat> and I was like, why were you only an E6? I think he was E6 or E7 when my uncle, when he got out and my dad outranked him. And I was like, why? Why did it take you so long to get promoted? In my mind, I didn't say it to him. And then I found out that they don't get promoted. And they got this customer service thing that I didn't care for. I worked for, I, I got selected to be joint service. And I went to Germany. I've been to Germany twice. And um, I was in this joint service organization, right? As a transportation person. They didn't even know what my job was. They put me in a motor pool. I was like, I'm not a motor sergeant. Transportation, that's not what that means. <laughs> so anyway, um, they had a commercial motor pool that they put me in on Rhine Mine. And um, that's when I knew them jokers didn't get promoted. They were like, they had the same amount of time in service or more than me. And they were E5s and I was already E6. I was like, nope, time for me to go. <laughs> time for me. I did the right thing. I did the right thing. That is until, you know, well, no, I, I don't regret any of it. Let me see. G Mama grows hard on air for makes less and less than army. Yeah, because they don't get promoted. Mm -hmm. They get, I mean, they, their quarters are nicer, so they say, and their, um, their, the way they live is nicer, but then they got that customer service thing where, a E3 could ride up an E6 for customer service. <laughs> that don't fly in the army. <laughs> you gonna write me up. I could I could never adapt to that. I had already um internalized the army values and when a, and when a little E3 was trying to tell me, I'm gonna write a complaint against you, this Air Force, what did they call them? Air Airmen? This airman was going to write me up. Man, I wanted to tell him off. I was like, you do what you want to do. Whatever. How dare you? <laughs> That's the way the Army thinks. Air Force is not like that. <laughs> and the bad part was I had an Air Force colonel. So he was like, what do you mean? Why did what happen here? I was like, this little E3 came up in here talking stuff. <laughs> Let's see. G mama grows hard in the garden. My family told me to pick up, pick up more Southern slang once I visited a home uh, on leave. Oh, excuse me. G mama hard grows hard in the garden. My family told me I picked up more Southern slang once I visited home on leave. That's because I was stationed in the Southern states. So was I. I'd never been stationed up, and I'm glad because it's cold up there. I went to Fort Knox. I was stationed. At Fort not I was stationed at Fort Knox for two years. And then I was stationed, Fort Riley was cold. I was at Fort Riley. I did two tours at Fort Riley. I went to Fort Riley, went to Korea, 
came back to Fort Riley. That joker is cold. However, I wanted to stay there. I was there so long. I was there six years total. I was in Fort Riley so long that people thought that I didn't PCS because I only did um, like 10 months, seven days in uh, Korea. And I came back to Fort Riley and did another four. And um, <clears throat> I knew everybody in Junction City. Junction City is Junction City on one side and Manhattan, Kansas on the other. And it's Kansas State University out there in Manhattan, Kansas. And for an Audi, outing, outing, for an outing, we would go to Kansas City or we would go to Kansas City, Missouri, where the arch is, the one arch, not the double arch. And, or we would go to, where else did we go? Now, Topeka didn't have anything. Topeka is the capital of Kansas. I was, at, I was in Kansas a long time. There ain't nothing out there. It's cold though. It's super cold, but I knew everybody in Junction City. My church was there. It was just, when I left, I was upset. But I left to go to Hawaii, so I wasn't too upset. <laughs> Let's see. In the Navy, it depends on your job and how many slot, slots available for the next rank. When you are eligible, you have to take a test in addition to our regular evals to get promoted. So they, the Army used to have tests. Back in, when was the last time I took a test? I think up until 1990, and then it was based on evaluations. In order to get to E6, they got a point system. You got to go to a board, a board basically of the chain of command. They ask you a bunch of Army questions, and you got to prove to them that you are, you know your stuff about the Army in general, the general stuff. They ask you Stuff like uniform questions and all that stuff. Stuff that doesn't matter on the outside, but inside the military. In order for you to get to promote it and to lead other troops, they want you to know certain things. So that's how you get to E6. But after that, you get selected by a DA board. E7, E8, E9. Because I was enlisted and then I went warrant. E7, E8, E8, and E9. That's all done by the Department of the Army. And I don't know who's on that board. But those jokers, they judge you based on how you look. You got, they got a picture of you. You can't be overweight because you ain't going to get promoted. I remember when I was at E6 and I was sitting in, I was at Fort Raleigh when I was at E6. And I was sitting, um, sitting there with a bunch of ladies, right, and men. And Sergeant Major was there talking to us and telling us how, you know, that the board was coming up and we need to make sure our records are in order and we get everything, all of our badges and our awards and all of our information in there. Make sure everything is in there so that the board gets a full view of who you are. But I knew that they were the first thing that they look at, and, and I've never been on the board, is your picture. And they discriminate based, as a matter of fact, they'll put, they used to put people out for being overweight. Failing PT tests, that's physical training tests, and uh, being overweight. And that picture is worth a thousand words. One, if you was overweight, you was not gonna get promoted. Not. Most likely not. I remember there were guys who used to go on these weird, there's army diets where you lose like 10 pounds in seven days, they're very unhealthy. But they would go and starve themselves before they took their DA photo. Let's see. G Mama Grows Hard in her career was my last overseas assignment. I actually enjoyed it. I was in Yongsan, Seoul, Korea, 10 months, seven days. And I had heard all these bad things. Never believe what you, <sighs> never believe what people say. People told me that Korea was a terrible place and that it smelled like kimchi. It didn't smell like kimchi. I didn't smell it. Maybe something wrong with my nose. What is this? I'm <laughs> talking. We up to oregano and my rooster is cruising for bruising. He's standing right at the door. And you know what it is? It's extortion. They want more feed. <laughs> as soon as I go out there and give them a little snack, they're quiet for another couple of hours. And they're getting too big. They're getting too fat. They can't even get up on their roost. Let's see. Retired gardener. Wow. Let's see. Retired gardener. I believe it. G Mama grows hard on the right. They body taped me before I could get my E6. It was all muscle. 
Yeah. So they weigh you, right? On a scale. And if you don't make weight, which is the army standard weight, they get their little tape out and they tape certain body parts. Men and and they and men are different. The tape for the men, the body fat, fat tape is is different for the men than women because women and men are built different. And if you have muscular, muscle muscle weighs more than fat. It just does. And if you go to the gym all the time and you put on a bunch of muscle, they're going to tape you every time. Every time. But when they look at you, they won't know you weigh that much. And sometimes you're puzzled. I mean, I used to be in there. And, and I was like, how, you know, how is this person overweight? And then, you know, they, 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 you have to strip down basically to your T-shirt. You know, you have your PT shorts on your PT, uh, your, your uh, PT shirt. And then you see why they didn't make the weight. It's because they're all muscle. I used to starve myself. I didn't like being taped. I knew when to take, when we was going to take a PT test and I would be like, mm, I ain't going through that. I don't want nobody touching me. I was weird like that. I got taped, I think two times while I was in the military, the retired gardener. When did you purchase those containers? These bootstrap farmer about a year or so ago. They are the best. I think this is the five inch, five inch pots. Pretty sure it is. It looks, it's, it looks like six inch, but this little extra inch right here, this extra inch does not count. So it's actually a six inch pot because I, I measured it. But it, it, they, they, they sell it as a five inch pot. Bootstrap Farmer. A lot of people use them. And that's because once you buy these pots, most likely you're not going to have to buy another one. That's, they're really good. Let's see. Baby. My friend was kicked out for failing weight three times in a row. Yeah, that's what they used to do. I don't know if they're still doing it. Because then when everybody uh, in the army, when we went to Iraq and Afghanistan, especially Iraq, Afghanistan, the food was horrible. Horrible. It was terrible. You'd have to look at your food before you eat it. That, I can't eat in the dark to this day because of that. You find things and bugs in your food in Afghanistan. It was bad out there. Iraq, we had chefs because I was in a place called, well, I was in Baghdad, by up, near by up, near by up, not at by up. And they had Indian chefs. And them jokers could cook. And everybody, everybody, except me, because I kept my butt in the gym, um, gained about 20, 30 pounds over there. That food was really good. And that was, that was not a blessing. When you're depressed and the thing is you're so depressed and you're away from your family and all kind of stuff is happening there, people would just eat. Just eat and eat. Eat yourself to death. Let's see. Retire the... Gee, Mama Gross Holland, I was in combat unit, so I was forced to be muscular. Oh. I wasn't in... I was in Hawaii, I was in the 25th ID. So that's a combat unit. Um, but they didn't force... Well, yes, they did. Because I had a crazy colonel. I shouldn't say that. But it was true. We were in, we were in Bagram, Afghanistan. And he would make us get up like we were back in garrison and run and do PT every morning. And he thought that because he was doing that, he was, you know, keeping us in shape and keeping our minds strong. Because if you're, if you're not exercising, most likely, you know, it'll keep your mind, it keeps your mind off things. It's true. People who are in better shape, their mind works better because your blood is flowing better and all that stuff. However, we have burn pits in Bagram. So he was actually, he thought he was doing good by making us exercise and, and run around uh, the perimeter road. It's called, it was called Disney. And it was dangerous too. The minefield and all that stuff. But um, he thought he was doing well, but there were burn pits. I know because I ended up at one one night. So there were burn pits out there 
And we were inhaling that. And then there's another thing in Afghanistan called 180 days of wind. We used to know when um, someone was new uh, in Bagram because their hair was shiny. And we'd look at them, we'd be eating, we were eating our food, jealous, looking at her. Yeah, her hair is not dirty. <laughs> They're terrible, terrible things that we did. Looking at her and saying, her hair is not dirty. Give her a week or two, girl. <laughs> Jealous, jealous, jealous is shiny here. Okay, who who was here? Those pots are awesome. I wish I had found them before I got all of these miscellaneous pots. I was watching a gardener's journey. She was the one who exposed me to this. She was like, I'm not an affiliate, but these pots are on. And so initially I bought some little itty bitty ones, these. Don't don't buy these, by the way. Get the bigger ones. And I bought I don't know, a hundred of them, a seventy something. They, they were, I mean, they were a lot, but they weren't that much. And then I said, when I got these, that's when I knew that she was telling the truth. I, Cause I was worried. I was like, I spent, I don't know, over seventy dollars on these little itty bitty pots. Cause I ordered every color, right? When they came in, these were, you know, what these are, Dollar Tree or Solo cups. And look, this is what happens to Solo cups after a while. See that? It's falling apart. These little things, I think I'll have this for the rest of my life. All of these pots, I don't think they'll ever break. They are, they are made like the stuff used to be made when my mom was buying stuff back in the 70s. So, okay, so I'm running out of, I'm running out of, so, well, I ran out of pots. So let me show you what I got. Let me, let me answer some people first. Let's see, did I miss anybody? Bebe says she loves miscellaneous pots. Ah, Shawnee 2003. Hey, how are you doing? G Mama grows hard in the garden. Love those chiefs from Desert Storm. Love those chiefs from Desert Storm. I love it. I didn't go to Desert Storm. I went to OIF and OEF. So, CJTS 76 and MNDB, which is. Combined Joint Task Force 76, Bagram, Afghanistan, which is OEF. And then I went to MNDB, which is Multinational Division Baghdad, OIF. So those two. I didn't get caught. <laughs> I say I got caught. Everybody at the, you know, we was all having a good time. Good time in the military. After Desert Storm was over. Well, it wasn't over, but after it died down a lot. Man, when 9-11 hit, everything changed, especially for the military. We started, it was quiet. You know, after something like that, everybody was just so shocked. I was at Fort Eustis in Virginia. I remember what I was doing, doing low plan, air load plans. I was in, um, I was in Warren Officer School, Warren Officer uh, Basic Course. And we were doing low plans, me and another chief. And well, we were still a uh, we, were, we were we were a W one a wobbly one, and um, I remember this guy in the back was like, "Oh, this he was from New York also." He was like, "Oh no!" And then we hear it, he turns the TV up because he was watching from his office, <clears throat> and I thought to myself, "Man, they need to start drug testing these pilots." Then it, then the second one hit, and we all just stood there, just shocked. And then everything got quiet for a while. And then the military started ramping up, sending people out. And once they started sending people out, they would rotate you out over and over and over again. It wasn't a one-time go. You go from one place, come back, train up again, go back out. Some people have deployed six, six or seven times till something happened or they couldn't do it anymore. Anyway... Let's see. G Mama grows hot in the garden. She says hello to Shani 2003. Shani 2003 says, hey, babe, the retired gardener. Hey, babe, babe. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> hey, babe, babe, at the to retired gardener. And then um, retired gardener is laughing. G Mama grows hot in the garden is also laughing. Retired gardener, hello, Shani 2003, babe, babe. It says, hey, Shani. So, 
did we go over with the ones that we did already? I take my little nasty cups and put them in the bucket. Oh Lord, I don't want to look at that floor. So what I have left is parsley. This is not parsley. This is dill. <laughs> Mismark this. I know what happened. I had a cup and a cup, right? And on the outside cup, I had dill. And on the inside cup, I had parsley. So it looks something like this, right? So I, I knew, I thought it was the outside and it wasn't coming up. So I was like, okay. So I threw some more seeds on top of it. And this is dill. This is dill for sure. I know what dill looks like. This is dill. Then I have my thyme here. I'm going to leave this in here. I think the dill, I have to replant this. Yeah, I have to replant this because this is super crowded for dill. Then I have my, not the sorrel, the sorrel tag keep coming on. Then I have my ashwagandha that is still coming up, just now coming up. My chives, which I have replanted because look at that. <laughs> look at my chives. I should be embarrassed. This <laughs> I don't know if they bunch up more than this, but this is not enough chives. <laughs> Put my hand behind it. Maybe that look at, you don't know. You don't know. There's only like six little chives in here. Cilantro looks like it's struggling for its life. So I think I replanted that. Cilantro seeds, by the way, are huge. The rest of this, the rest of the um, herbs seeds are like microscopic, but cilantro got some big seeds. The basil is right here. I've already taken some basil outside because I had to fight with these bugs out here because they, they thought they was going to eat up all my stuff again. That The snails are back in, 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 high, in high demand and they're eating up my things again. So either I got to go out there and throw more poison, which I do not want to do, or every morning I got to go out there and harvest snails. Now, it's a win. It's a lose win because first they're eating my leaves of all of my brassicas <laughs> out there. However, when I gather up the snails and put them in my jar or jars, depending on the day, I feed that to the chickens and my chickens are, have not stopped laying. Chickens eat bugs. So I just collect what I can out there. Okay. And here's my sorrel. I have two or three sorrel outside. So some of these things are start going to start getting hardened off. I'm going to put them under the grow lights for a couple of days or maybe two weeks. And then I'm going to harden them off outside. And one is going to go outside and one will stay in here. Well, no, they're probably all going to end up outside because I can have all these plants in here. I'm not going to tell you that. <clears throat> Retired Garden said it looks good. G Mama grows hard in the garden. I got four herbs. I got to restart. I left for two days and they dried out. Yeah. Yep. That happens. And then, you know, you can't leave them soaking in water because then they get root rot. Don't feel bad. My parsley never came up. So I replanted that at the beginning of this video. <clears throat> My cilantro looked like it's struggling, so I replanted that. And the chives, I just showed you the chives, so I replanted that. That's what gardening is. That's what, what, what's great about gardening or, you know, you just got to keep on trying. Me, I mean, herbs have not been that well, my, my, my basil has been really, did really well. My basil did really well. But the rest of them, like the sage, which is one of the plants that I really, really, really want and really need because I use sage a lot in my cooking, like when I'm doing my, my kusha. Oh, man, that, that sage just sets it off with some, oh, gosh, with some sugar. Woo! Sugar and sage, hand in hand. With kusha? But I didn't get enough of it. So I'm glad this challenge came around because I got things that I needed to do anyway. And of course, chamomile. Chamomile is expensive. I don't buy that no more. Or the time. Where's my time? Where's my time? There it is. Time, by the way, is a perennial. I have a, a bucket of time in the greenhouse. Last year, I didn't put it out in a, in a green. Last year, I didn't have a greenhouse. I just threw a blanket over it. I've had that time for, this is year three or four. Time, once you get a, a bush of the bushel of time, 
it ain't gonna die on you. And it could take a little drought. So that's what's good about time. Let's see, Urban Gardening Chronicles. Hi, how are you doing? Oh, wait a minute, let me go back. Shani, 2003, are you coming to the Soil Family Expo in Savannah this weekend? Mm -mm. No, it's expensive. <laughs> and I got another trip planned right after that, so I can't. I can't do it. I can't do two trips in one month. I just can't afford it. So, no. Maybe next year. Maybe next year. Let's see. G Mama grows hard in the garden. You can sprinkle some Epsom salt around the base of your plants for the snails or garlic spray works. Thank you. I'm going to do that. Epsom salt. I got Epsom salt. Dollar Tree sell Epsom salt. I, I got plenty of Epsom salt. Urban Gardening Chronicles. Hey, Jamaica, I had to crack the cilantro seeds in my hand before I planted them this time and they germinated. Otherwise, I barely got any to come up. Oh man, wish you had been here before I put them in the pot. I don't wanna dig them up. <laughs> There's some on top. You cracked them, huh? I don't know, I, I can't crack them. Here's some on top. Oh, it did crack. Man. You're watching Jamaica do some surgery on her. Oh, they they do crack. Man. Shoot. Well, I got three of them to crack. That's all I could find. Let's see. Thank you, Urban. Thank you. Let's see. Urban Garden Chronicles. Hey, Shawnee, 2003. Miss Shirley OG Gardner. How you doing? Welcome. Welcome. How you doing? I'm doing the Herb Garden Challenge early because I had some stuff. <clears throat> Let me get a drink. I had some stuff that could not wait. I had my sage, my oregano, and my chamomile up planted. I just split the chamomile up. One of them looked like it, it, it want to bite the dust over here. I had to replant them because <clears throat> they they just didn't they didn't look good. They were struggling. I'll fix that later. That, that little one right there don't want to stand up. It's in shock. Let's see. Retired gardeners just saying hi, baby. He said gardening is like an experiment. Exactly. It is an experiment because you put these seeds in the ground and you just have to have faith that they're going to come up. And most of the time they come up. And I'm always excited when they germinate. Always, always, always so excited. Especially if it's a plant that I've never grown. Well, no, all of them. But especially the ones that I've never grown before. The ones that I didn't think I could plant. I have some lavender out there. For the people who are growing lavender, let me tell you what to do with lavender. Put it in your refrigerator for a couple of weeks. A couple of months, maybe. Lavender has to be cold in order for it to germinate. So if you have lavender and you're, you're in the cold, up and in, in still in the cold environment, take it, put it in a bottle, wrap it up in tape, and put it outside and forget about it. And it'll come up as long as it gets that cold spell. That's what makes it work. Let's see. Urban Gardening Chronicles. Hey, the retired gardener, the retired gardener. Yes, gardening is an adventure. It sure is. And you know, <clears throat> sometimes you grow something. And <laughs> last year, I took, and this is a beginner beginner mistake. I took some turnips because I wanted to hedge around the, um, the gazebo where all the flowers are. So I took turnips and I said, well, I'll put some turnips around my, my to hedge around it. Turnips are uh, by themselves. If you bunch turnips together in a group, oh, they look wonderful. But if you get them as an individual plant, they look like a weed. So I had to upplant some turnips last summer. <clears throat> and then I was, um, uh, one of the YouTubers, I forget who it was, told me, Jamaica, when I do turnips, 
do you, you know, because I just eat, I enjoy the leaves more than I like the turnip. I just do. I just like turnip, turnip greens. She said, just throw them out. Throw them out in a, in a big old plot and then, you know, let it live and let it die. <laughs> oh God, I shouldn't have said that. But you know, you just put them out there. I put it out there and I had more turnips than I could eat. More turnips than I, my neighbors could eat. It was a lot, a lot. Finally, I, I dug them out because they were going to seed and I got, I, I took the root and then I, I roasted the root. Turnip fries, I tried to eat turnip fries. Some things, they're not, they, they're okay, but they're not potatoes. They're not potatoes. <laughs> Let's see. Yes, gardening is an adventure with the retired gardener. Urban Gardening Chronicles. You still need to put an update on April 5th. I will. I'm going to do a short though because I did this. The only reason why I, I did this is because I had stuff that was probably going to pass away. The, the major one, I got them done. The sage, the oregano, and the um, chamomile because they were, they were becoming root bound. Thank you, Urban. Uh, I'll do it again on the 5th. Let's see. The rules are very specific at, as he has watched all the videos. So we will all have to op upload on the same day. All right. I will. It's going to be a short, though. Uh, shorts count, don't they? <laughs> retired gardener said, same here. Regard retired gardener. I didn't know that. Thanks. Yeah, April 5th. So if you're or you're participating in the planter, it's pl hashtag planter HGC 2024. Planter Herb Garden Channel 2024. I'm just, you know... I'm just doing the best I can because my parsley didn't come up. So I probably won't win anyway. <laughs> Did not come up. I didn't replant it. Let's see. Retired garden. I didn't know that. G mama grows hot in the garden. I weeded some plants thinking they were. <laughs> oh, I know he looked like weeds sometimes. G mama grows hot in the garden. I weeded some plants thinking they were weeds too. Retired gardener is laughing. G mama grows hard in the garden. Planter <clears throat> doesn't like shorts because he misses them. Okay. Well, I guess after this, I'll do a video. I can't very well edit this thing because it's alive. So I'll do another one on the fifth. It won't, it's going to be, it, it'll be a, in long format, but it's not going to be, I don't know. It depends on how talkative I am that day. Yeah. Depends on the talk of this <laughs> on the 5th. And if I have to, like last time, I'll do a live. Because <laughs> last time I was late. And I was like, I know videos will not upload on time. If there's a lot of people uploading at the same time on YouTube, your video, depending on how long it is, may not show up for a couple of days. Example, I'm not on StreamYard. I'm using YouTube's app in order to do this live. Once I get off of here... This video automatically goes to private. And I had somebody say something about it. Uh, GT Junior Grows in Alaska. He said, I was watching you on live and you, you, it just cut off and went private. YouTube does that. I don't do that. So if you're using the YouTube app in order to do a live, you got to wait for that thing to upload. After you get off your live, it shuts you down. The video gets processed like a video that I would have done and loaded to the um and loaded to the thing. And it takes forever. Sometimes it takes a day, sometimes it takes a day and a half, depending on how long it is. This video has been on here what 75 minutes. You won't see this video for those of you who are going to be watching the replay or those of you who are watching it, you know, back back watching it, back dating it and watching it as from the beginning. You will not see this video once I get off here for at least a day. That's, that's just the way it is. And sometimes I don't like touching YouTube after that because I touch, I did a video, I think the last video I did disappeared. And I think it's because I accidentally deleted it because I thought it was something else. Let's see. G Mama grows hard in the garden, right? It takes a long time when everybody's trying to upload at the same time. <clears throat> the retired garden. Excellent live. Thank you. Signing off now. Take care and God bless. Thank you for being here. 
And I'll see you on the next one. I never announce my lives. I just get on here. G Mama Grows Hot in the Gardener says bye to the retired gardener. So there are 11 of us on here. This video will show up in about a day or two. <laughs> I'll plant it two, four, six, seven plants. And then I planted more seeds. So I did about 10 plantings in all. And then I just gave you an update in general, but I'll do it again on the fifth. I thank you guys for being with me. I really do. I hope you all have a wonderful time. And for those of you who are participating in the Herb Garden Challenge, good luck to you. All right. And I'll see you guys on the next one. This is Jamerica with Jamerica Life. Please like and subscribe. And remember, keep on planting. Keep on planting herbs and vegetables. All right. Y'all take care. Bye.